hi welcome back to my channel i hope you're all well thank you for clicking on this video just a quick reminder before we start i make true crime and occasionally commentary content so if that's something you're interested in please subscribe for future videos um just a quick disclaimer in this video there are mentions of child abuse and child sexual abuse so if that's something that's triggering to you or something you can't handle right now please take care of yourself and click off this video uh, let's get started. Here Comes Honey Boo Boo was a reality television show that aired on the TLC network for originally four seasons from August 8th, 2012 to August 14th, 2014. A fifth season was filmed, but it was never aired because of controversies that I will be covering in this video. Though in April 2017, TLC sort of aired a special of of Here Comes Honey Boo Boo called Here Comes Honey Boo Boo The Lost Episodes which aired some clips from the unreleased fifth season. Here Comes Honey Boo Boo was a sort of a spin-off of another reality television show that was popular on the TLC network called Toddlers and Tears which was also highly controversial. The show followed children beauty pageant contestants as they prepped um, and participated in a particular pageants. Each episode highlighted a different pageants, and I believe for each episode, they would follow three different contestants that were participating in that particular pageant. Alana Thompson was featured on two episodes of Toddlers and Tierras season five, uh, the first being the pilot, not the pilot episode, but the first episode of the season called Precious Moments Pageant 2011. <laughs> I'm Alana, I'm six, and I'm a beauty queen. And the second episode was the 18th episode in the season called Georgia's Most Beautiful Girls Going for the Gold. Alana was only six years old at the time of filming these episodes. She instantly became a viral hit after her episodes aired. The recognition she received was most likely in part due to her larger than life personality and her sort of underdog plot line. Alana wasn't the typical pageant contestant featured on the show. Usually they were very, very, very tiny children from upper class families as pageants are very, very expensive and costly, which obviously then would create a wealth disparity among contestants that participated. Many pageant parents that were featured on the show sort of went through a lot and consequently force their children to go through a lot to secure a pageant title or win a pageant, including putting their very young children, mostly under the age of 10, um, to go on pretty extreme diets, get extreme spray tans, practice their walks and routines with pageant coaches, and have highly edited portraits of them taken, sort of headshot portraits. Elena Thompson and her family were notably different from these other pageant families. She was from a sort of working class family from Georgia. Alana's mother, June, would sort of coupon would do like this extreme couponing to save up and participate in pageants. She also loved to eat and didn't really seem to care as much about how she was perceived by others. I think this made Alana seem more relatable and entertaining to watch as opposed to the other girls who were featured on the show. And additionally, a six-year-old Alana had a sort of comedic flair that I believe was well beyond her years. She delivered humorous catchphrase after catchphrase, including you better redneck and eyes and honey boo boo child and a dollar makes me holler. This time. A dollar makes me holler. Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> she earned her nickname Honey Boo Boo after her episode of Toddlers and Tiaras aired, in which she said, quote, those other girls must be crazy if they think they're gonna beat me, Honey Boo Boo child, in her introductory interview. It must be crazy if they think they're gonna be me, Honey Boo Boo child. In the episode, Alana's mother, June, sort of started a lot of controversy for feeding Alana what they called go-go juice to give her energy before her beauty pageant performances. Go-go juice is sort of a mixture of Red Bull and Mountain Dew. My special juice is gonna help me well. 
according to June, a lot of pageant children are given pixie sticks, which is just straight up sugar from their parents. It's nicknamed pageant crack to give them an energy boost before they go on stage and do their various routines. But the sticks weren't enough for Alana, so they created their own juice to get her hyped up. In response to the controversy, June said she wasn't harming her daughter, citing that she could be giving her daughter a lot worse things, such as alcohol. In the pageant episode, the first episode Alana was featured in, she won third runner up and was notably disappointed, though her family was very happy because the pageant she had participated in before that, she had only gotten participants. Based on her internet of virality, Alana, now nicknamed Honey Boo Boo, and her family were given their own reality TV show by the TLC network called Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. The show, of course, starred Alana, nicknamed Honey Boo Boo, June, nicknamed Mama June, which was Alana's stay-at-home mother, and then Mike, nicknamed Sugar Bear, which was Alana's biological father who worked as a chalk miner. The show also heavily featured Alana's three half siblings. Mama June was all their mother, but they had a different dad. So there was Lauren, nicknamed Pumpkin, Jessica, nicknamed Chubbs, and Anna, nicknamed Chickadee, and I believe they are between 14 and 17 years old. The show followed the family's chaotic home life and featured memorable plot lines, such as Alana preparing for other pageants, 17-year-old Chickadee giving birth to her first child, and Mama June and Sugar Bear having a commitment ceremony instead of a marriage because Mama June's afraid of marriage. The show appeared to be an instant hit, and the family became pretty much a household name in many North American households. Despite its commercial success, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo was canceled before season five could air because of Mama June's indiscretion. Around a year after Mama June and Sugar Bear's commitment ceremony slash like pseudo wedding, um, they broke up in September 2014. They didn't have to file for a divorce, of course, because they were never legally actually married, but they did break up. The split was allegedly caused by Sugar Bear's numerous infidelities, including affairs or online affairs with both men and women, and he had various online accounts on different dating sites such as Plenty of Fish. There is some speculation online that the entire cheating scandal was fabricated to sort of distract away from what Mama June had done, which was dating a convicted sex offender and letting him around her children, specifically Alana, who was only nine years old at the time. The sex offender that Mama June was dating was a man called Mark Anthony. McDaniel. In 2003 or 2004, McDaniel was convicted of aggravated child molestation and served a term of 10 years for the crime and, of course, remains a registered sex offender because of his conviction. Shortly after the sex offender dating scandals went public, June's eldest daughter, Anna, revealed that she was actually the child that was abused by McDaniels back in the early 2000s. Back then, Anna was only eight years old and Mama June was dating him. This was when they first started dating in the early 2000s. Anna said that when Mama June and McDaniels were dating, he would, quote, would try and touch me and all that stuff. She alleged that she actually went to Mama June with the abuse, what was happening to her, which occurred while Mama June was at work and she was home alone with McDaniels. June allegedly didn't believe her daughter and blamed her for the abuse. Anna then told her grandmother, which is June's mother, a woman in name Sandra Hale, about the abuse and she she was the one who actually took Anna to the police station to file a police report. This caused a major rift in their relationship between Mama June and Anna. I don't know if it's Anna or Anna. I keep saying both. I'm going to go with Anna. So Anna then started to live with her grandmother and only moved back in with her mother, Mama June, in around early 2012, right before they started filming Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. The mother-daughter duo decided to put what happened in the past behind them to work on their family relationship. So after serving 10 years in prison, 
McDaniel was released in 2014, and it was rumored that immediately upon his release, June and him reconnected. June initially tried to deny allegations that she was with McDaniel, but paparazzi took a sort of barrage of photographs of June and him out and about, including going car shopping and allegedly shopping for a house together. There were even photos of nine-year-old Alana hanging out with the couple, which of course was a huge concern because at that time Alana was nine which was a similar age to Anna when she was abused by McDaniel. June's mother Sandra when she learned about the allegations that June had reconnected with McDaniel and was letting McDaniel in the presence of Alana immediately reported the dating allegation to Georgia's Child Protective Services. June's relationship with McDaniel and the public sort of a media storm it caused and controversy caused production of Here Comes Honey Boo Boo to sort of seize immediately and for no new episodes to air at that point. There was also some speculation that McDaniel could be the father or the biological father of June's third child, Lauren, though June claims that Lauren's biological father as well as her second child, Jessica's, is actually a different registered sex offender named Michael Anthony Ford. June said that she only reconnected with McDaniel after his release from prison because of Lauren's suspicions that he was her biological father. In an interview, June said that Lauren, also known as Pumpkin, wanted to speak to him and was beginning to resent Anna for McDaniel's absence in her life. So she decided to facilitate a a meeting between Lauren and McDaniel's to get Lauren's various questions answered. June asserts that she only saw him twice after his release from prisons, though I'm not really sure how much you can trust her word on this because there are so many paparazzi photos of them together that it doesn't seem reliable in my opinion. Either way, it is still wildly irresponsible and disgusting in my opinion to make contact with your daughter's former abuse user and allow him around your children after what happened. Then we move on to the second sex offender that Mama June has romantic connections with, which is Michael Anthony Ford, which she probably dated around the late 1990s to early 2000s because June alleges that he is the biological father of both her second and third children who were born within that time span, sort of like late 90s, early 2000s. In 2005, it's alleged that Ford was caught in an undercover sting set up by To Catch a Predator, though I don't believe that episode ever aired. The details around the sting and his subsequent arrest are murky at best. There are reports that his arrest was caused by an unrelated sting from the show and other reports that it was caused by a sting from the show. It's a little confusing. Anyways, Ford was still arrested based on a sting in 2005 for trying to solicit oral sex from a child he believed was a 13-year-old girl. He also reportedly exposed himself to this pseudo- girl as well, but it was obviously an actor posing as an adult. If you know, to catch a predator, stings a higher adult actors to play minors. But based on these charges, he originally spent two years in custody and then he was released on parole, but he was caught in possession of a laptop, which was a violation of his parole and was charged again. It was also discovered that he was using the laptop to access teen porn websites. He missed his court date for these charges in 2013 and removed his ankle monitor that he was court ordered to wear and disposed of it on on the side of a highway. He is currently still in prison for those charges or that second conviction and isn't expected to be paroled until 2026. He has no involvement in the lives of either of his children with Mama June, according to reports from both him and June. So June doesn't have a great track record of picking men and who she allows around her children, which obviously caused and I think justifiably caused the end of her TLC show and put her children in danger more than once. But this setback 
setback didn't stop the Honey Boo Boo family, specifically June, from trying to continue her reality television fame. Mama June and Sugar Bear went on a reality television show called Marriage Boot Camp in around 2015-2016, so season six of the show. Essentially, the show follows different reality television couples who are experiencing issues, then the couples do a variety of sort of like therapeutic tasks or exercises and then at the end of the season they decide whether they want to break up or stay together. And then Alana Honey Boo Boo went on Dancing with the Stars Juniors in 2018 where she was the fifth contestant eliminated. The family eventually landed an entire new reality show called Mama June from Not to Hot that started airing on WeTV in 2017. The primary plot or the original plot of the show was to sort of follow Mama June on her extreme weight loss journey where she got lap band surgery and other things. She originally lost around 300 pounds, so she went from 460 pounds to 160. This reality television show featured Mama June, Alana, Lauren, also known as Pumpkin, Gina Rodriguez, which is the family's manager, Sugar Bear, and Jennifer Lamb, who was Sugar Bear or is Sugar Bear's new partner. Notably absent from the cast of this spinoff are June's two eldest daughters. The show quickly took a turn for the less positive when June started a new relationship with a man named Eugene, also nicknamed Gino, who has, of course, a lengthy criminal record, including charges of burglary in 1996 and theft in 2009. Things quickly started getting worse for the family when Gino was introduced to the mix. Mama June quickly fell into a world of addiction. Primarily, she was addicted to crack cocaine and she was becoming less of a presence and an active parent in Alana's life, who was the only minor still at the time. The three eldest children were all adults. So, Alana's older sister, Lauren, who I believe was only like 19, 20 at the time, eventually stepped up. Her and her partner, who is now her husband, stepped up and got custody of Alana, and I believe they still have custody of her. In June 2019, Gino and June were both arrested for possession of a controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia. The fifth season of Mama June from Not to Hot, now titled Mama June Road to Redemption, set to be released actually this month, so March 2021. So I guess we'll have to see what sort of happens next, but I do believe that June is still dating Gino and doesn't have custody of Alana. It is just extraordinarily upsetting, in my opinion, for someone as young as Alana to be launched into a superstardom and for all her family issues and crises and tragedies to be so heavily publicized. From the recent clips I've sort of seen from Alana and her older sister Lauren. She is, they are both incredibly mature and put together for their ages because they've sort of had to be. Additionally, at six years old, Alana was essentially the one that was pulling in the most money for her family. She was responsible for her family's fame and fortune. She was the star of Here Comes Honey Boo Boo and the primary reason that viewers too into the show week after week. I can't imagine the type of pressure and weight that puts on a child so young to have to be the primary breadwinner in your family and to have to sort of be on and be prepared for public talks and stuff like that. It is, of course, my opinion that children as young as Alana or minors at all should not be featured so extensively and scrutinized in reality television slash social media started because I think it's extremely detrimental to their overall well-being and health. I don't think they're able to have a normal childhood which they have the right to have and the long-term effects of the fame and various stuff are very detrimental to them. 
them. In addition, if you look at all Alana's been through, it's a million times worse for her than it has for other child stars. I just think it's not appropriate and overall a tragedy, but I think Alana and her sister are very strong people and are doing the best, and I wish them well. That's really it for this video. That's where the Honey Boo Boo family is at now presently. So if you liked it, please like the video and subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time.